Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the brushes. So, name itself a brushes. Generally, brush is a very important part. That is, it is used for the collecting the current from the rotating part. So, especially, generally, collection of current from the stationary part is not a difficult task. But if this thing, if it is rotates, it has some rotation then collection of current from this rotation part is very difficult part okay yes here function of brushes is to collect or give the current through the commutator segments you know that so generally if it is a generator what happen generator means it will generates that means brushes should collect the current it should collect the current it should collect if it is the motor that is reverse operation those brushes are give the current so it should give so that is it is the commutator segments what is the importance of commutator segments commutator is a thing so mechanically mechanically controlled rectifier mechanically controlled rotating rectifier the intention is to uh, useful to convert ac to dc or dc to ac okay so that is the important part of the brushes so generally brushes are for armature we should collect like this we should collect like this this will be represents with brush one and it should be represents with the brush two okay right here the brushes are made with carbon or copper so these are the things are made with the carbon or copper why carbon or copper so carbon copper both can be ca ca copper is nothing but it a it is used as a conductor so by that it is very easy to collect the current but it is for only the small machines only small machines means it is less than one kilowatt only so it is used for only less than one kilowatt okay next electrographite for normal rating machines so we have the another type is there that is the electrographite so those are the graphite brushes that will be normal rating machines next we have the copper graphite copper graphite is the another material that will be useful for large rating machines those are the large rating machines three things are important first carbon or copper for the small rating machines next electrographite is normal rating machines next copper graphite for the large rating machines here the important thing is graphite material is useful for medium as well as the large rating machines that's why electrographite machines is useful for the normal rating machine and copper graphite is useful for the large rating machines okay all right here how many number of brushes should be available is also discussed here so here the number of brushes is generally equal to the the number of poles for lap winding so we have generally two types of winding those are winding connections are two types one is the lap winding another one is the wave winding lap winding is here look at here number of brushes we are using to number of brushes that should be useful for the number of poles equal to that means brushes equal to p means poles b means number of brushes p means number of poles and next case for wave winding it is for the wave winding number of brushes equal to 2 2 means that is the for the wave winding next here carbon is itself a self lubricant it is a self lubricant material that means it can allow the uh, it can allow the water content having an high resistance it has the high resistance it consisting of the carbon has some characteristics though characteristics are like this carbon is high lubricant is the one character lubricant material and the next character is it has the high resistance it has the high resistance third commutation is also improved here 
you know the commutation is a very important role in case of the dc machines and it is more stable it is having the good stability disadvantage it is a but carbon has some disadvantage that is the more brushed up whenever we are using the carbon means itself it is a high resistance wherever it has the high resistance it has a more voltage drop voltage drop will be high this will be the disadvantage generally this will be the disadvantage okay so this is about the brushes and use of the brushes and brushes uh, brushes are useful for some materials and the log winding and wave winding and characteristics of the brushes and next topic here the next topic is the armature winding so generally you know the armature is nothing but collection of conductors it consisting of the more number of conductors it has the collection of conductors name itself it has consisting of the more number of conductors so generation of emf is emf is generated in case of the generators here and it will be armature will be rotates in case of the motor so that is the importance of the armature and armature itself it has more number of conductors means conductor should be put in a proper order otherwise the operation is not possible so in order to provide that proper order we we are using the armature winding armature winding armature winding means you have the conductors that have armature winding generally this armature winding is two types one is the lab winding another one is the wave winding we have two types one is the lab winding another one is the wave winding so now we will look into the first armature winding that is the lab winding here look at here so if you observe here these are the brushes generally these are the brushes and these this is the commutator this is the commutator and uh, this is the insulation these parts are the commutator segments these parts are the all are the commutator segments commutator segments yes so the winding is like this how the winding is arrangement just observe here for example if you have a two pole machine armature have the two pole machine that is the north pole another one is the south pole the machine is arranged like this generally the finishing end of the first coil is connected to beginning end of the second coil so look at here so first you have to know what is the meaning of the coil the coil is nothing but it is a collection of conductors coil is nothing but the collection of conductors so the current will be if it is a coil coil is like this it will be arranged current will be flows like this this is the so this is the coil is called a conductor this is the one conductor and second one is the another conductor first conductor and second conductor now just look at here that's why if we just observe the diagram this is the one coil how many number of coils we have available this is the one coil just look at here this start from here and end here what is the second coil second coil is this is the second coil what about third coil third coil also this part is the third coil yeah we have three number of coils just look at here finishing end of the first coil so this first coil finishing end this part is the finishing end and connected to the beginning end of the second coil under same pole this is the north pole this is the second second coil just observe the second coil this is the beginning end yes beginning end same for this this coil the finishing end of the second coil is connected to beginning end of the third coil so whenever the arrangement is like this we can call it as the lab winding we can call it as the lab winding 
so this is the arrangement just observe here we have the three coils and two poles the arrangement is like this startingly it like this and one in the coil one pot um, one conductor is in the one pole another conductor in the another pole next for this second coil one conductor is the one pole and second conductor is the another pole and the third case this is also same thing it will repeats like this it will repeats like this yes and we have some formula that is number of parallel paths in multiplex lap winding equal to a equal to m into p a equal to m into p so generally we have parallel paths are available generally parallel paths we will discuss deeply about windings parallel paths means how many windings are available like this this paths like this paths like this paths so in multiplex winding lap, lap winding equal to a equal to m into p so here number of parallel paths in wave winding equal to a equal to m into 2 a equal to m into 2 okay here p is the number of poles generally you know and m equal to 1 for simplex winding we have only simple winding like this m equal to 2 it is the duplex winding if m equal to 1 it is a triplex winding for m equal to 4 it is the quadruplex winding so these windings simple what is simplex what is duplex and triplex we will discuss later so here multiplex windings are used only very large currents machines so generally simplex winding is more common these type of windings are generally not used but simplex winding is very common so therefore the number of parallel paths is represents with a equal to p in lap winding and generally number of parallel paths a equal to 2 in wave winding this is the thing only so number of parallel paths will be a equal to p in lap winding number of parallel paths equal to a equal to in the wave winding okay so this is about the lap armature winding in that lap winding i hope all of you understand the session thank you